All right, gang, I'm going to solve a bunch of problems on the mod 7 and mod 8 so that you can look at this, you can fast forward, pause, rewind, etc. to try to do better on the retest that we're going to do this Wednesday. So here we go. So the first one, there's a triangle, you know, you're, you're wanting to find a bunch of different measures here. So remember that all the angles in a triangle add up to be 180. So this one here, the, the 90, the 55, and the x, those add up to be 180. So you can set up a little equation. So you can do 90 plus 55 plus x equals 180 and then you can just uh, figure out what x is that way so we can do 145 plus x equals 180 and so then we can solve for x so we can subtract the 145 from each side so that's going to give us 35 so x equals 35 so I'm going to go ahead and put that in there Okay, now, didn't mean to make that little mark. So now, let's figure out some other measures here. So, we know that these two here form a straight line. So we know that a straight line is 180. So that means we can do 180 minus 35 and that will be 145. So that means this angle right here is 145. Then what we can, and that's y. So y equals 145. So we'll write that. So y equals 145. Okay. Next, let's look at this triangle right here and this one is going to be purple and so it has this angle measure that's 10 degrees it now has this angle measure that's 145 and now we need to find out what z is <clears throat> so we can do 145 plus 10 plus z has to equal 180 so that's 155 plus z equals 180. So z has to equal, so we have to subtract 155. So that is how much? 25? So 25. All right. Okay, next one. Okay, so this one's just a triangle. We want to solve for x, so we're just going to add all these together and set it equal to 180. So by the way, we have some students that are adding everything together and setting it equal to 180, many things. The only things we set equal to 180 are triangle angles and then also when we have a straight line and we want to add up two angles that add up to be a you know straight line which is 180 as well. Some people are using 180 when they're talking about lengths of sides of a triangle. It doesn't have anything to do with lengths of sides, so just angles. Okay, so back to this. So we're going to add those two together. So that's 7x plus 30 equals 180. And then we're going to subtract 30 from each side. So I'm hoping you're listening. So we subtract 30, so I'm not writing every single thing there. So that means this is going to be 150, and then we're going to divide by 7. So x equals how much? x equals, what is that, 2, goes in twice. Uh, is that not even? Did I just make up something that wasn't even? Uh, what is that, 14, 10? Oh yeah, that's not even even. So, hold on, give me one sec here. Grab my calculator. All right, I'm 
a slow phone. I was trying to use my phone here. 150 divided by 7. Oh boy, yeah. So that's not going to be a good one. So I'll just say for that one, we'll just say 150 divided by 7. How about that? And then it's just a funky decimal, so, but if we're solving for x, that would be it. Okay, the last problem was good enough practice on that one, because we, you know, we solved for x there. All right, uh, the next one, uh, an interior angle. So the interior angles are the ones on the inside of the triangle, these ones here. So we would say angle 2, angle 3 angle 4, and then the exterior is this one here, so that's angle 1, and then the remote interior are the ones that are far away from this one, so that those are these two, so that's angle 3 and angle 4, see how they're the farthest away? Alright, so let's find the values here. So there's a relationship that says that the two remote interior angles, if you add them together, they equal this exterior angle. So all we have to do is just add those together. So 36 plus 93, that is 129. So that's what this equals. What's the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a pentagon? So a pentagon, you can see, has five sides. And we're going to use this formula. So the sum equals n minus 2 times 180. So you need to have that memorized. Then we're going to put the number of sides in there. So this has five sides. So that is 5 minus 2 times 180, S equals 3 times 180, and that equals what, 540? All right, 540. All right, a polygon has interior sum 3060. So we use the same formula, except this time, we know the sum, so that's what we put in for the left-hand side. So that's 3060 equals n minus 2 times 180. And then if we need to solve for n, because we need to figure out how many sides it has. So we're going to divide by 180. So we divide by 180, and we get that cancels out. So that's n minus 2. 3,060 divided by 180. How much is that? I'm going to pause and get my calculator. Okay, I found out it's 17. And then I'm going to add 2 to solve for n. So that's 19. So it has 19 sides. Okay, find the value of x in the quadrilateral. Well, to find the value of x, we need to add up these angle measures, but we first need to figure out what the total is supposed to be. So quadrilateral has four sides. So we need to use that same little formula as last time. So we go s equals, and we're going to put in the four sides here. So 4 minus 2 times 180. Remember that one? So that's 2 times 180, so that is 360. So it turns out that all four-sided figures have a sum of the interior angles of 360. All right, so now we add up all these angles. So we have x plus 4x plus 3x plus 2x equals how much? 360. Okay, we add up all these x's, so how many we got? We got 1, 4, so we have 10, so 10x equals 360, 
and then you have to divide by 10. So 360 divided by 10, 36. All right, let's make sure we answer the question. Find the value of x. All right, that's it. So x equals 36. All right. So determine what kind of triangle this is. Now, this one tricked people on the, the first test. So hopefully the next one you won't be tricked. Uh, what people notice is that on the test it had two measures that were the same, two angle measures, and they immediately said isosceles because it has two angles that are the same. It's okay logic, but in actuality, when you add up all of the, when you solve for x, it turns out that all of the angles were the same. So you got to actually do the work and add up all these angles and solve, you know, solve for x. So all these add up to be 180 when you add them together. So we're going to do that. So 18x plus 10, this equals 180. We're going to solve for x. So let's add up all these x's. So it looks like we're going to have, let's see, like 29x. And then we got, when we add these two together, we're going to have 35. And then that equals 180. And then we're going to subtract 35. So 29x equals 180 minus 35, which is 145. And then we're going to divide by 29. So 145 divided by 29, 5. All right, so now we know x equals 5, and what we needed to do on the test was we needed to take the 5 and actually plug it in to all of those to see what the angle measures are. So the first one, that was 40 degrees, because that's 8 times 5. This one here is 3 times 5, that's 15, so this one's also 40. And then this other one is 18 times 5 plus 10, so this is 100. So this one is actually isosceles, okay? So that's why we would say isosceles. If you find out that all the angles are the same, then you're going to say equilateral. And if you find out only one of the angles, you know, that they're all different, then you just say neither, okay? All right, find the value of x. So it looks like here we've got 65. Now notice the mark here and the mark there. So that means these two angles are the same. So that means this one has to be 65. And we know that this is a triangle. So that means they have to add up to be 180. So 65 plus 65 is 130. So that means that this one has to be 180 minus 130, which is 50. So this one here is 50. And that's why. So if that one's 50, then the one straight across from it is also 50. Since they are vertical angles, and then you'll notice the marks on this triangle, mark, 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 and so the base angles are the same, the angles across from these two congruent sides. So if that's 50, so is that. And those two add up to be 100, so here's a triangle right here, this purple one. And so 50 plus 50, that's 100, and that means that x has to be 80, because they have to add up to be 180. Again, 50 plus 50, you know, plus the x. So you can always set up a nice little equation to solve for that, if that helps. All right, what do I got here? Okay, so the vertex of an isosceles triangle, so let's draw it. So the vertex is 70. Find the angle measures of the base angles. So find these. 
Okay, so we know that they have to be the same if it's an isosceles triangle. So we're going to do 180 minus 70. That's 110. But they have to be split. That has to be split between these two angles. So we're going to divide that by 2, and that's 55. So each of those two angles has to be 55. All right, so this is just matching. So a line perpendicular to segment at the segment's midpoint. So that one is a perpendicular bisector. So 5 is A because it's perpendicular and it's at the midpoint. A ray that divides an angle into two congruent angles, that sounds like an angle bisector. So that is 1 should be B. And then a segment that joins the midpoints of two sides of a triangle. That is a mid-segment. So we're talking like it joins the two midpoints. That's the segment right there. It joins the two midpoints. And so that one is 2, which is C. And then a segment whose endpoints are a vertex of the triangle. So let's draw a picture of that one. So a segment whose endpoints are a vertex of one triangle, so here's a vertex, and the midpoint of the opposite sides, so that's a median. So 4 is D, and then a perpendicular segment from the vertex, so let's see what that looks like. A perpendicular segment from the vertex to the opposite side, it's perpendicular. That's called an altitude, so that's 3, and that's E. So those are what you want to memorize for the retest. Okay, which of these uh, is going to be which? So we have a circular fountain. It's going to be on a triangular lawn, and it wants to touch each side. So it's going to look like that. This is the fountain. And this is going to be the in-center, the one that actually touches the sides. So it's the same distance from each of the sides. So this is called the in-center. The way that you uh, find the in-center or construct the in-center is from angle bisectors. So what you have to do is you have to construct the angle bisectors and wherever the angle bisectors meet that is the in center so right there is the in center now for the constructions themselves there's nothing better than those links that I shared on canvas so you're gonna have to look at that so very few people were able to construct correctly on both of those you're just gonna have to practice that looking at those links and then uh, see me if you're if you're still not getting it we can work on it one-on-one -on -one, after school anytime okay the next one is a warehouse and it has three different stores so these are the three stores and it wants to be the exact same distance from each of those three stores so what does the trick for that is the circumcenter and the way you construct that is you find the perpendicular bisectors these are perpendicular bisectors and they meet up in each of these so this is called the circumcenter circumcenter okay so these are perpendicular bisectors they meet up here and each of these um, the, the circumcenter is equal distance, we say equidistant, from the vertices of the triangle, so from the, the three corners, if you will. Okay, so this one, we're going to find the circumcenter. So let's plot our points first. 
So one one, let's see, that'd be right there. Uh, we got one seven, which would be right there. We got six one, which would be right there. And you have one just like this. It's just a right triangle. And so all we have to do is find the midpoints and then construct construct the perpendicular bisector. So this one here is, like I say, this one's one one. This one is six one. Let me label these better. So this one is one seven. Okay. So we just need to find the midpoint. So the midpoint is just by adding the x's and dividing by two and adding the y's and dividing by two. So this one here is just right in the middle between one and seven. So you can just add seven plus one and you divide that by two. So that's uh, eight divided by two, which equals four. So that means one four is what we want. So 1, 4 is the midpoint, and then we would construct the perpendicular through that, which would go like this, and it would hit right there. And then we would do the same thing for the other segment. So we're going to go ahead and find the midpoint of this one here on the bottom. So we could add the 1 plus the 6 and divide by 2, so that's 7 over 2 which is three and a half, which is about right here. So this point is seven halves, comma, one. Uh, that point I already got, okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and draw the perpendicular to that. So it would hit right here. And you can tell that it's gonna hit and if I drew the, the side a little bit better, let's see if I can find a straight edge here. If I drew the side a little bit better, then you could see it intersects right on the hypotenuse, the midpoint of the hypotenuse. And you can tell what the coordinates are right there. So these coordinates, uh, you slid over, you can tell you went over seven halves and then we go up four. So these are the coordinates of the circumcenter. Okay, all right, next, name the theorem we're gonna to use to solve this. This is the angle bisector theorem. Angle bisector theorem. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're just going to set these equal to each other because whenever there's a point that's on the angle bisector, it's actually equal distance from the sides of the angle. That's what it says, and vice versa. So if you have a point that is equal distant from the sides of the angle here, then you know that it has to be on the angle bisector. Okay, so we're going to set them equal. So we got 6y minus 16 equals 4y plus 6. And then we're going to subtract 4y, so that's 2y. We're going to add the 16, so 22y equals 12. Okay, so now we need to answer the question. It says find BC. So BC is listed as this length, which is 6y minus 16. And now we know that y is 12, so we have 6 times 12 minus 16. So that is, that should be 72. 72 minus 16, 56. So <clears throat> that is, mm, did I do it wrong? Hold on. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. So back her up. Back her up, Dolly. So um, this should be 11. I don't know how to divide. Sorry about that. So 22 divided by 2 is 11. That means when I put it in here, I want to put in 11. 
So I'm going to put 11, and that is 66 minus 16, which is 50. So BC is 50. All right. All right. So I think this is the last one. So the, this is about mid segments. So let me label this thing. So RM is 23. And NM is 20. Mm, PM is 30. So you remember this one is the Bermuda Triangle. I tried to warn you about the Bermuda Triangle. So this is 30. All right. So remember that this segment here is half of the distance of this. Okay. So this is 30. That means this is 60. Uh, this side here is 20, so that means this side here is double that amount, so that's 40. All right, uh, let's see, what else do we want? Uh, this is 23, so that means this has to be 23. So then the whole side would be 46, because we just add the two parts together. So the perimeter of the triangle... Well, actually, let me do this. So this one's 46, right? So half of that is right here. So that would be 23. So let's find the perimeter of the whole, the big one, the big triangle. So that would be the perimeter of the big one. I'll do P, I'll say big, perimeter of the big. All right, so that would be just adding them up. Adding up the sides, so 60 plus 40 plus 46, that equals 146. All right, now let's do the perimeter of the small. Let's see what that is. So let's add those together. So that is 20 plus 23 plus 30, so that is how much? That's 50, 73. And what you notice is that the perimeter of the small is one half. One half the perimeter of the big. See that? And you have something so similar. Remember the Bermuda? This is the Bermuda Triangle. Okay. And this is just showing you the image of that link. So there's no better thing than the link. I can't even do the marks and everything on here. So remember, if you're doing the circumcenter, um, you gotta you you want to construct the perpendicular bisectors. So again, go to the link, and then if you want the in center, you gotta construct the angle bisectors. And wherever the angle bisectors meet up, that is the in center. And it makes a circle on the inside. Backing up to this one, whenever you construct the perpendicular bisectors, they meet up in such a way that you can draw a circle that is circumscribing the triangle. That's why it's called the circumcenter. Okay. Again, it's created by constructing the perpendicular bisectors of the segments. This is constructed by the angle bisectors. Okay, so this has been really fun. So I hope that you do amazing on the retest. And I'm crazy. It's a Sunday night at 10 to 10, and I'm here making this. So I hope you take advantage. All right, later, skater.